Um, we, we're back. This time, I think that the microphone is working. So, this week, we're going to have another weird thing where we release two episodes at a time, uh, which means we missed Easter, uh, the Easter special, uh, because hey. in the Easter episode... Uh, we had a huge audio problem where for about an hour of the two that we recorded, my mic wasn't picking up. So I uh, am currently having to re-record all the narration uh, that we lost, uh, which is a real fucking bummer. Uh, But hopefully it means that both of these episodes can come out at the same time and then we can get out of the rut of not having anything in the channel uh, for a month again. We're, we're back on schedule for weekly mm-hmm. readings uh, from now until forever. Um, and we're also talking about uh, making a change of pace after Tokyo Babble's done to try to play something that isn't Chunige and that isn't 40 to 100 hours long. Uh, which means no you know, uh, sadly. I think Yuno might qualify as not Shunige, but I think it might be like a hundred hours. So, <laughs> so I don't think I don't think we're doing that. Uh, but we might do something else. Uh, no Shunige uh, does not mean not serious. Uh, it just means like not this. So we might do something horror or mystery or romance. Uh, I've been wanting to play a Bishojo game. Uh, for a while, because I feel like if you go long enough playing visual novels without playing Bishojo Ge, uh, you're it's like going long enough learning how to drive a car, uh, but then only driving cars from 1960, and like never having touched a hydraulic steering, a steering wheel in your life, you know? Uh, I don't know. Like, it's a very crucial part of the culture. Uh, and uh, and not knowing anything about it is or never having experienced it is kind of a it's kind of a bummer. Uh, so so maybe we're gonna do that. I picked up some quality choices, um, but that's that's for the future. Uh, I, I would like to ask both of you to raise your microphone volumes if possible because I feel like it's a little low. Uh, last couple episodes. How, how is mine? That's better. Okay. Mapo, are you there? Yep. I... Can you go a little louder, uh, if possible? If you can, it's fine. Let me try. Because I've noticed that in the last couple episodes, sometimes it's hard to hear you guys over the music, and the music is already pretty low. Uh, I've maxed out the Discord settings. But you never know, right? Uh, let me... Yeah, no, uh, apparently my audio is already mixed out. Okay, uh, so we're going to make do with what we got. And make sure okay. that everything's fine. I- I'm going to try to fix it for the next future episode. Yeah, no problem. So last we left off... Um... What happened last week? Last, uh, yeah, last I time? think uh, actually, I think we we we, we had a conversation with Razio, right? We ended it on that. Yeah, no, right. we ended yeah. after that. We ended in Amanuelia of Setsuna, I think so. No, yeah, then Setsuna. Yeah, we had a conversation between oh. Setsuna and Raziel about Setsuna's past, and then he got really sad, and he got uh, a flashback, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then he watches the stars, isn't that right? Yeah, he, he went outside and yeah. looked, or he went to the window and looked at the stars, and, uh, and I think that was about that. Uh, yeah. We spent That's the next... Medic. What? That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, we spent the next day in idleness. The three girls went their separ- uh, separate ways, each doing whatever they pleased. I, too, decided to take a quiet stroll around the campus. Um... My recovery was all but complete. My pain had long since faded. I would be able to participate in Belly Owl's training without any problems. Oh yeah, we have the training arc.
The next day, I made my way to the gymnasium just like I had promised. Belial stood in the middle of the basketball court looking like his usual self while performing a number of warm-up exercises. You guys getting... You guys getting like uh, a Taiga Dojo vibes from this scenario? Kinda, honestly. A little bit, a little bit. Like, it, it's funny, I, I can picture Saber. So, Belial is Saber? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I was just saying I can picture Saber, you know, using one okay. of the wood swords. Okay. Yeah, Saber and Shiro are in the background <coughs> fighting. Uh, they've gotten here before you we can, did. You, you can yeah. see it because Belial is front of them. Right, exactly. Belial's huge <coughs> back muscles are just uh, covering uh, both of them fighting in the background. Yeah. In this place, I was his pupil and he was the teacher. As such, I saw it fit to respond with the appropriate politeness. Not because I feared receiving a penalty of sorts, but rather because I felt it necessary. I felt my heart tighten as I stood in front of Belial. What I felt then must have been fear, yet as the demon lord's gaze pierced me, I detected nothing from him. No hatred, no hostility. His very presence made fear seep into the depths of my heart, clutching it, uh, clutching it tightly in its grasp. With a single snap of his finger, Belial engulfed the area around me in violent flames. They burned for a split second and vanished like they were never there to begin with. <coughs> Another snap of his finger robbed the vicinity of air, preventing me from breathing. After a few seconds, he snapped again, making the air return. Bright flames were not fit for the black of the night, for they clashed with her very essence, that is, darkness. That must have been the idea behind it. I feel like this information is gonna be relevant later. Yeah, probably. Can go back? Oh, sure. That might be, yeah. That's right. So, uh, that, that Lilith is uh, vulnerable to fire damage. Oh, okay, thanks. I wonder if that's gonna be... If that's a setup for Lilith's route fucking 30 hours from now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. Holy shit! That that's some Maybe. foreshadowing. Maybe. He should be pulling out the big guns here. Yeah. Maybe in the next month we will, we will discover that. Like a bunch of jellyfish. I think jellyfish don't fly, bro. Belly, uh, Belial left out an enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic guffaw. I pictured Raziel floating in the clouds like a jellyfish and uh, found it awfully fitting. <laughs> マリオクという四大元素から外れた存在について完全に理解する必要がある。理解ですか？マリオクは物理的な観測が不可能だ。だが感じ取るように so can't observe magic, we can only sense it, but Sorami can observe and sense it, I assume. はい。the first day I arrived here, Lilith gave me some training. The moment he said that, something crashed into my face with the strength that broke some bones in my neck. <laughs> very, very effective training there. 
I immediately began mending the broken bones, reconnecting nerves while alleviating the pain with a dose of sedatives. The entire process still left me immobilized for over 10 seconds. I want to make just a comparison. Yeah. This, this can't remember me. <clears throat> of Naruto and Sasuke. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. That's real. I'm totally not kidding. I'm talking about when Mother used Limbo. Yeah, and yeah. Naruto can only sense it while Sasuke can can see it, and I think he can sense it too. Right. Okay. Fukashi ni shite onsoku no ichigeki da. Yobi dousa mo nashi. Dai rokkan de kanji toru hima sura mo nai. Ima no wa ningen de yu tokoro no. Well, it can't have been coming. Could it? Could it have come at the speed of sound if we heard the the sound at the same time that the hit struck? If it's coming at the speed of sound. Wouldn't 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 the sound come a little later? Or, if, or is that only af if it's faster than sound? I don't remember yeah, anything true. about physics. I, 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 think, I think I think it's the same speed. So. Although, what, what, what was the question? Uh, if. Uh, if if the if the strike hit at the same time as it made the noise of hitting, is it really fa uh, traveling at the speed of sound, or does it need to travel faster than sound for it to hit before you can hear it? Uh, I uh, mean, I think I think it, it needs to hit first because the sound com comes right after the read. So. Man, I don't remember that, that. That's that's. I don't remember anything about physics. My <coughs> no, my knowledge no, is just gone. We are talking about sound. when when you hit someone and that and that make a smack something like that. Like yeah. That. yeah. When you, when you hit when you hit something, the moment you hit, the sound is produced. Right. So. Oh right, that's true. That's true. I guess. Yeah, I guess if it was going faster than sound, then it would make a like a shock wave kind of thing. But that's for unrelated reasons. Like kind of, kind of when it, uh, planes uh, activate afterburners and they go at like Mach two, and then it cracks. You know. I think this is. Yeah. I think that's unrelated. I think that's interesting to to say the truth because I just thought of someone who could do like a two punts. Uh, I don't know, maybe has two times more than the speed of sound suppress it in two times. And the person literally can push the the other two times, and the sound of the, the smack the, of the hit would come just after the second hit. That's crazy. You know, the person would, would hit would hear the first hit right after the second hit. That's fuck. That's, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. We need to look into that. Fucking fucking thirty two chan science over here. Uh, how 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 does sound work in the context of punching people? We should make like. Yeah, but it broke it broke my bones. Um, this is gonna be a highlight. This is gonna be a highlight for sure. Either way, I finished recovering and stood up. According to Belial, there was a huge difference between the perception and observation of magic. The former meant trying to detect magic through sheer intuition. The latter, on the other hand, also relied on an ability surpassing intuition in, uh, uh, in order to observe and sense the flow of magical energy. So the first skill I needed to master was the observation of magic. Belial produced a wolfish grin at my question, the kind that rivaled Lilith's in terms of being able to send a chill down my spine. Get good, bro. Now that I thought about it, even back then... I finally realized why I had a bad feeling about all this. You said the thing. If you guys don't remember, uh, Belial, the original word meant lacking worth. Uh, it was originally an insult uh, before it was considered to be a demon. 
Uh, so he reacted. Okay. Uh, I didn't know. Well, we we went over it many episodes ago, uh, but I wouldn't expect you to remember that. <laughs> he erected pillars of fire, water, earth, and air around himself. <laughs> Each was placed around Bella. Why the? What the fuck? Are the? Is the the CGI too much for my computer to handle right now? That's that's crazy. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Technical problems. Technical problems. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is this is absurd. Wait, wait. Yeah, the quality, the quality of the ground back there is really. Wow. Wait, I'm 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 like I'm 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 about to like what the fuck? Belly up broke the Ipsum. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh I closed a bunch of shit. What the fuck? Okay. Salmon, that's just a train yard. <laughs> okay, I I closed a bunch of shit. Let's hope that this makes the performance better. <laughs> okay, okay. So many highlights going to come from this arc. episode. This is going to be bad, <laughs> dude. Each was placed. Oh, 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 oh! I, I think, I think I got it. Yeah. When Belial punches them, okay. Okay. If, oh my let, God. Let's assume he's going faster than the speed of sound in, in middle air. Okay. 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 I think that's the highest speed uh, sound can reach. Okay. He, he does that, and the moment his hand, his his fist comes in contact with Setsuna's body, he produces a sound wave. Right. That sound wave, if his fist is going faster than the uh, speed of sound in air, it will not be heard uh, before uh, before Belial's fist goes back to its initial position, because it will be traveling faster than it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. neither Setsuna or Belial will be able to hear the sound through air if that's the case. If his fist moves faster than, uh, than the speed of sound in there. I see. I see. So it'll be a little bit after. Is what is the yeah, impact? Yeah, it, it'll be a little bit after. Okay. All right. Um, each was placed around Belial with the demon lord standing in the center. I sealed my heart, locked my gaze on him, and prepared myself. Oh my god, it really is laggy. Jesus Christ. Uh, locked my gaze on him and prepared myself for the worst, and began the process of observation. The first strike came from the pillar of fire. Jesus. Dudes, I, 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 I genuinely do not know why my computer is dying. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I thought, I thought, I'm gonna be I so real. Thought, I genuinely thought the, the your computer just died and the the game just crashed. Okay. okay, I'm gonna take this opportunity. We're opening a Patreon, so. Oh hell yeah! Um, oh hell yeah! Let's talk about the Patreon. Uh, so Come we on. haven't we haven't opened the Patreon. Uh, that is that is not true. However, I have considered doing it. So. Uh, if you would like to give us money to buy more games, uh, let me know, and then when the Patreon is open, I'll let you know so that you can give me money to buy more games. Uh, and, and by that, he means stealing the money to, you know, buy a computer that can handle that much CGI. Of course, yeah. No, I closed, I closed yeah, some are, other shit. Yeah. I, realized, I realized that I had a, an image editor open, and I was working on, like, a map for a tabletop thing that was really high resolution. So that probably was not helping my computer to handle the graphical fidelity of Tokyo Babel. The moment Lilith pushed the gem's doors open, she was immediately struck by a fierce shockwave. What? The entire gem was in a complete state of ruin. Parts of the protective barrier they had set up had been damaged, other blown, uh, others blown clean away. <laughs> The bits that still stood were smeared in blots of dark crimson. How the, f how the fuck does that work? Is he supposed to feel the columns of air shifting? I think it's the six cents, Belial snapped his fingers. Belial launched two pillars, one of fire and another of air, towards Setsuna. 
Fanned by the wind, the flames expanded at terrifying speed. Lilith saw the spot, uh, that the spot the Belly Owl occupied was a safe zone and proceeded to approach the Demon Lord. He then wasted no time in sending a pillar of earth in Setsuna's direction. Ooh. In the span of a heartbeat, the pillar of earth hardened to precious stone. Setsuna attempted to dodge it, but was too late and found his flank pierced by the attack. Could he though? Through touch? Hmm. The core of this type of training relied on forcing the trainee to sense the flow of magic by gradually robbing him of all his senses. Oh, so I guess like... The sixth... the magic sense is the sixth sense? So even if he didn't, yeah. if he only had touch, then he would be able to feel the, the the flow. I would know things about knowing flow from playing all of the Richi Mahjong that I've played. There's a lot of flow sensing going on over there. Uh, so so I'd be able to deal with this just fine. Setsuna really just needs to get better, honestly. Belial, however, uh, only left Setsuna with one, uh, one out of five senses right off the bat with the intention of hastening the process. The whole process would lose I mean... meaning... Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, this training is very useful in this context, but what if he encounters just a pretty strong fighter, like no magic at all, he's just so skilled that he can match magic users? I mean, I think that's something that can already deal with that, right? Because he's a badass. Can he though? Can he though? I mean, he did almost get killed by like a 16 year old high schooler. Uh, a couple hours back, you know? So, yeah. maybe maybe he can't, I don't know. The whole process would lose meaning if he died before mastering that skill, though. Still, Satsuna gave his consent. That's what matters. I ask the cutie before touching the booty, wishing to achieve <laughs> results in that short <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. So true. Oh, man. Wishing to achieve <laughs> results in as short a span of time as possible. Sixth included? What the fuck is he supposed to do? This answer came uh, without hesitation. It may have sound, uh, seemed cl cruel, but she was tightly balling her hand into a fist soon afterwards. He wouldn't get far if a training session of this caliber gave him a hard time. In the near future, he would be faced with situations far more terrifying than this, battles where he could easily perish and he would need to emerge victorious. But above all else, Tendo Setsuna himself would never choose the easy way out. Yeah. Men don't do anything they think is hard, uh, isn't hard, you know. Belial's yell roared across the gym. That's why you need to always be hard around men. Oh my god. With his eyes closed... Can you say that again? Can I? Can I, Mappa? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can. If you didn't catch it, you can just watch the video and find out what I said. <laughs> uh, we're pulling out all stops here, folks. There's no coming. There's no slowing down this train. Uh, with his eyes closed, Setsuna nodded in the direction of the voice. Belial looked at him with approval. <laughs> Okay, so magic, magic sense is the seventh sense. But he starts speaking English all of a sudden. I don't know. The four pillars all shot out at Setsuna simultaneously. Setsuna pressed his hand against the floor, almost like he was doing a crouching start. I reanalyzed my current situation. I lost all five of my senses along with the so-called sixth one. I failed to read the flow of the air, hear the sounds around me, and per perceive smells. Even as I opened my mouth, I tasted nothing. Magic was an attribute that resisted, uh, that resided in a position far transcending the senses. Magic or witchcraft normally made people think of demons, but angels tapped into this bio power all the same. In fact, calling it a force would have been a more appropriate name. 
It was neither solid nor liquid nor gaseous, a force that refused to fall under any category of nature. I think you mean energy, bro. Uh, That's true. <coughs> if I fail to see... I mean, in which of the four fundamental interactions would this fit on? I was... I, I, want, to, I want to make a comment, uh, comment right here. I was thinking about the, the thing that he said. Uh, Saturn can't see magic, but he can sense it. Right. So I was thinking if the water, fire, air, and earth were just an illustration that we could see, but Tetsuna could not. But right after I found that, I just thought about the the first episode where Saturn used flames. Yeah. I think it, I I'm not sure if it was with magic. I don't remember very well if it was or it wasn't. But I remember that um, that Sorami could see it. Well, I think and I it think was before she got the, she, she got the eyes. I think the idea is that you you can see the effects of magic. You can't see the magic, right? Like the ma energy. Yeah, the magic energy. is the energy that makes the reactions that we see, right? Uh, yeah. And you can't see that like the same way. That I guess, like, I don't know. You can't, you can't I, I see was, uh, the individual photons moving. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you, you can, you can perceive light regardless. So. But, but the simple fact that you can sense it or see it, it, it will have a lot in the battle because I don't know if the person can do some magical, uh, long distance magical. Level. Right. Right. Uh, make a peer uh, appear as fire right after a shooter, something like it. If you can sense the the energy flow coming right after you, right before uh, it might it might its materialization. Right. It, it will be useful. Right, right, right. If I fail to sense that energy, I could very well die here today. Energy and force are not synonymous. Translator man. Or Higashide. I don't know if Higashide uses them synonymously in, in the original, uh, but that that's not right. No, I had to rephrase that. I would die for certain. If not now, then some other day in the future. I did not wish to fail, let alone perish. You see this, the special effect loaded properly now. I was all at once engulfed yeah. by raging hot flames. My sense of touch may have been shut down, but the pain still remained. The pain. Next came a pillar of ice-cold water, then the diamond one biting into my flesh. Crippling pain ravaged me, anguish far surpassing what I had prepared myself for. Even biting back my own screams felt an arduous toil. Ah, why did I have to feel pain? Someone like me did not need that sensation. These thoughts sluggishly floated through my mind in the midst of all this. Indeed, the issue came up when I was created. That is, whether or not I needed to feel pain, whether or not I should be given the sensation of agony and hardship. Many argued I did not need such thing, uh, uh, any such thing. That was the way it should be, have been. I could finally realize that now. So why, why did I feel pain? To this day, I treasured all my memories of her, so I could easily recall the conversation in question with no particular difficulty. <laughs> Bro, we got some Nietzschean philosophy here, we got some liberalism. Yeah. A long road. Ultimately, I couldn't reach its end. They couldn't make me might have been a more apt expression. Ah, uh, the pain was indeed necessary. It pushed me onwards, driving me to desperation, making me desperate to live. Suddenly, I could feel something. <laughs> I forced my body into motion, having sensed something that went beyond mere sight, hearing, and touch. If I had to liken it to anything, I felt uh, almost like having a third eye open, an eye that sensed but one thing. MAGIC! Four rectangular objects gather around something emanating tremendously powerful magical energy. 
Next to him, I sense something, uh, someone also radiating magical energies, most likely Lilith. I finally managed to see the flow of magic, a realization that made me lower my guard. My vision went black instantly. You fool. Pay more attention, will you? The words might have come from Belial Lilith or even myself. Either way, its acute warning pushed me to once again focus my mind. I had already grasped the basics of the technique once. As such, I could easily replicate it. The Pillar of Fire Mountain Assault. I successfully leaped out of its way. Uh, uh, next came the Pillar of Water, ready to tear me to shreds. This time, I evaded by ducking. As I kept evading and evading the incoming attacks, the Pillars soon moved in for a simultaneous strike. However, despite their astonishing speeds, they traveled at simple trajectories, making it easy for me to predict their movements. I heard someone snap their fingers. A moment later, I felt a surge of intense pain within my body. I wasn't being attacked, I was simply regaining con uh, control of my lost senses. The four pillars split up into several smaller ones, and I soon found myself weathering the onslaught of 32 slender jav javelins. The javelins all shot out uh, uh, at once before Belial even finished his sentence. <laughs> Their speed exceeded that of sound. Neither my sense of sight nor hearing could keep up with them. My sixth, sen uh, my sixth sense pr uh, proved similarly useless here. The attack had no blind spots whatsoever. One of the javelins impaled my palm, another sank deep into my abdomen. Ice-cold pain flared in my entire body as my nostrils drank in the stench of burning flesh. Simple evasion proved insufficient here. What was I to do then? All, my, all weapons in my disposal, including the ones within my body, were sealed away beforehand. I had but one thing to rely on. Magical attacks were allowed, but I could not use such arts, any such arts. In that case, I needed to master it, right here, right now. I calmed the incessant chaos of my thoughts. No matter how logically I thought it through, it could, I, could po uh, I couldn't possibly clad myself in magical energies. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm reading terribly today. Yikes. Yeah, um, in fact, I need to tap into the illogical. Casting aside principle, ignoring a proper process, only journeying for the end result. In other words, the ability to clad myself in magic. That meant overturning the very laws of physics I believed in, alongside common sense. Not an easy task at any rate, and I certainly would not be given the luxury of uh, setting awakening where I could master the skill in a heartbeat. I had managed to at least see the flow of magic. I focused my attention on it, expanding all willpower I had to, provide, uh, to properly sense the magical energies around me. I made use of my eyes, ears, nose, and even my tongue to force awareness on myself. Full awareness of the power known as magic. Indeed, for, for awareness was of paramount importance at all times. We could perceive the flow of time by glancing at the clock. At times, even ten, second shorts, uh, even ten short seconds could feel like an eternity. However, when one was not consciously aware of its flow, ten mere seconds flew by in an instant. Awareness, 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 awareness. I seized the vague existence known as magic and pulled it within the boundaries of my own realm. So after being stabbed 27 times, uh, while thinking about all this shit, uh, Setsuna was able to stop the last two javelins from killing him. However, the world was not so kind after all. Belial's grin broadened as he inspected me, thoroughly impaled by a number of javelins and on the verge of death from blood loss. I rose to my feet on the verge of vomiting. I don't think that's how it works, Lilith. That wouldn't solve anything, though. For the time being, I began regenerating lost blood through my nano machines. Having used up all my stored up energy reserves, I found myself suffering from severe hunger. Even better if I could have high concentration nutrients. She helped lift me up without yes, waiting yes, for an yes, answer. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 I admire you, I'm going to say one thing. But, I don't know. If you have two of them, you have two of them. 
Oh, come on, Belial. That's never stopped anyone from being the protagonist. Uh, I had a, but a very small victory to celebrate, for the road ahead was still long and arduous. It would be long before I could catch up to Adam. Belial flashed the sadistic grin. I spoke up, interrupting Lilith mid sentence. Lilith wiped my arms and forehead with white hand uh, with a white handkerchief. I could still feel the cloth absorbing my blood with every movement she made. That certainly made sense. Uh, once she was done, Lilith folded her handkerchief back up, tucking it away. Oh, oh baby, that's what I'm talking about. Such a missed opportunity. <laughs> Raja, the one doing this. So true. She promptly licked her lips, and I promptly retreated a few steps backwards. Oh, Where's this Rezio? Oh, Satsuna. <laughs> it wasn't exactly the best of jokes, though. The next day, I continued my training with Belial. Gotta love that. That's what I'm gonna tell all my students when I become a professor. Oh my god. Can you guys hear that? Oh, I, I can. Okay, that's good. My roommate is fucking screaming. Uh, oh my god. He apparently did something, so that's good. We began a training s- <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck, dude? Oh my god. I, I thought was a what is this happening? I don't know, man. He's playing League of Legends. This is such a League of Legends player moment. Leaguer hours. Such a lol. For real. We began a training session not entirely unlike yesterday's as Lilith spectated from the back. Today was full-on carnage mode, it seemed like. The moment we began the session, all my senses were cut off. It hardly mattered, though, as I had already succeeded in detecting the flow of magic through makeshift sight, hearing, and touch. A perfect strike flew at me, uh, one without any blind spots. I poured strength into my right arm, and unlike the last night, evasion would be hopeless. I needed to counter it with magic of my own, and so I attempted to recall that particular sensation I felt during the last session. I tried to recreate the exact state I was in that night. No, I needed to do more than just try. I had to DO IT! DO IT! I strained all nerves on my right arm, circulating a vast amount of data at, uh, at an incredible speed. Indeed, to give birth to magic, one needed the kind of data none of the other five senses could perceive. Bundles of data, fire, water, earth, and air, data representing the javelins making use of those elements as weapons. The data, that is, the magic of my right arm, could be freely changed, manipulated through my input. I opted for something visually easy to comprehend. Molding the data of my right arm, I willed a steel gauntlet into existence. <laughs> she said the same thing. Uh, I slammed yeah, my- Yeah, that's true, man. <laughs> Me and Liv said the, the same Same wavelength. Just made for each other. I slammed my gauntlet into the group of data, uh, indicating the javelins that kept hitting and hitting and hitting. By the time I realized, my five senses had returned to normal. I appeared to have cleared today's session without problems. Success! Oh, come on. Even I felt like doing it from time to time. Either way, this brought my training to a close. I was going to ask him if I was ready to finish training. He only pointed a finger at me while shaking his head. Oh my god. Was there a time skip? Oh, he just trained for the twice. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. This might be a Higashire moment, just cutting corners. Okay. Um, Maybe. Maybe. There was another level? 
Belial lightly leapt into the air and signaled to Lilith that she should stay at a safe distance. The next moment, the demon lord, knew, uh, known as the Worthless One, launched a full frontal attack in my way without even a hint of holding back. Each of the javelins raining down upon me were more powerful than enough, more, po more than powerful enough to take my life. The relentless downpour of a myriad javelins did truly resemble a rainstorm. I was not a fan of rain, especially the kind that could kill me with every single drop. Ha! You get it? The joke! Wow! <laughs> I fucking oh hate. my god! I fucking what a hate good this kind joke. of rain. Uh, I need to. I need to disclose this. I sent a message to to Mapo earlier this week about this exact kind of thing. I hate this kind of writing. This like cliche like. Pseudo funny Marvel writing. I hated rain, I mean, especially the kind that could kill me with every single drop. Ha! I mean, technically, <laughs> every drop of rain could kill you with the right speed. Right, exactly. All they need to do is, is accelerate. This was Death Incarnate. The image of death burned deep into my retinas, much like the time I had fought Abdiel a few days ago. I had at least enough time to take a deep breath. It was enough to calm me. Along with the air I exhaled, I rid myself of all confusion. I initially thought to recreate the same gauntlet I used before. It would allow me to deflect each and every incoming javelin, but that wouldn't work. If the javelins found a spot on me that I couldn't deflect with the gauntlet, that would be the end of me. You're getting all armor? Relying only on the gauntlet was out of the question. No, I, I think it would be a shield. Maybe. Or oh, maybe... I forgot the name. Shit. What 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 do you have to to take when it is raining? Like a raincoat? Or a or a no. an umbrella. An umbrella, right? An umbrella. Right, right, right. An umbrella. An umbrella is just a shield with a stick, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's I needed to strengthen my defenses even further. With a shield perhaps? One that would protect my entire body. I could also go with a protective full body armor. No, this wouldn't work either. Why? Those, those seemed both very reasonable to me. The magical energies hurtling my way displayed terif uh, terrifying power. It it wouldn't work because of the same logic of Gunglet. Right. Uh, apparently, he makes some... The, the Jinxions have some space that can go in the attack. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, uh, in fantasy, armor never works anyway. Right, so... Yeah. Uh, even if I strengthened my defenses, just one strike would be enough to kill me. In that case, how was I to proceed? Evasion? Out of the question. No living creature could possibly dodge every single drop of a downpour. That I truly have no other option than to perish? No, you just have to play lots of Toho, get really good at it, and you can dodge all the all the rain. You can make shield, or you can dig down. As Lilith's words reached my ears, I couldn't help but notice Belial frowning beyond his rainstorm of javelins. In short, there was something in Lilith's words that could help me, but what? Magic wasn't bound by anything. I had to discover its potential. I wasn't doing that up till now? My mind raced, piling theory upon theory, finally arriving at a conclusion. Ah, so that's what she had meant. There was no need for me to deflect anything. If I couldn't repel them, I, could, I simply had to tap into another attribute to render the javelins impotent. Impotent. Magic was not bound by the laws of nature. Instead, it existed as bundles of data, nothing more. Indeed, magic held infinite potential. Whatever the laws of physics did not permit, its power could make possible. So trample over him. That one phrase burned bright into my mind. Very well, let's do this. Molding magic's unbound potential into form, I gave birth to something that could far exceed even Belial's attacks. I pictured a shield of thorns. Trace on. Trace on. <laughs> and with that... A great multitude of thorny vines sprang forth from my right palm. Reacting to the incoming javelins, the thorn-clad vines shot out, entangling each and every one of them. Once that happened, I began the process of data erosion. Fire data invalidated, water data invalidated, air data invalidated, earth data invalidated. Losing their prior vigor, the javelins each fell useless onto the ground, some evaporating like boiling water, others burned to cinders in an instant vanishing from sight. The thorny vines extended further and further, devouring more javelins along the way. And once they extended to their maximum, when I had used up all my available magic, the javelins too dispersed into thin air. <sighs> okay, this doesn't make sense. That's... Well, it makes sense, but it's bad. Uh... 
like it's this is a soft magic system, right? Uh, so, whereas I won't I won't say that Fate Stay Night has a hard magic system. It has a harder one, right? Where we're talking about like energy consumption versus effect, and it's assumed that magic kind of works like superpowers in a superhero comic. Like each yeah. character has a special type of magic, and then they can also do some other stuff that's kind of minor, right? Like, Dean can do the yeah. power transfer thing, uh, but then she can also yeah. use Gondor. Uh, Shiro can use projection, uh, but then he can also, like, I don't know, uh, use reinforcement. And then uh, Medea can shoot uh, beams of stuff, uh, I guess, and then also use mind control enchantment magic. Uh, but then you, you know kind of the relationship between the amount of power that you need to input and then the effect... And you know that they have, like, limited libraries of things that they can do. Uh, or that they will do at any given time, right? What they're setting up here is that there is no limit to what magic can do. If you can, if you can imagine it, you can make it happen. And then there's also no cost, apparently. Uh, Setsuna doesn't lose any MP from this. It just, it just happens. It's the line. Okay, it's the line. but... Why? Why is said that it doesn't make sense? It, it isn't because Section was able to create the far the turns. Uh, it is because uh, the whole purpose, the whole purpose of the game of doesn't work in, is because it has some space between the the metal that could that could that the ring could go in and right. affect him. So he used it far turns, like. Well, yeah. I mean. I don't Which understand I like the I don't understand the, the 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 they they were talking about like how armor wouldn't work but if you made armor that was good enough it would be impervious to damage I don't understand what, why the thorns I, are necessary I, like I I don't understand why they're the solution to the problem like they're not What I didn't You know what I didn't what I understood is that the armor couldn't take it because it has some space between the middle that the ring could go in, right, and could touch his skin. So I thought, okay, maybe he can't. He t- he can say he can make a perfect armor, but he can make a perfect shield because it would be easy. Because the, uh, everybody has a lot of how do I can say it. We have five fingers, you know. It's it's more difficult. Right, right, right. Our structure is difficult. So I thought he could make some external shield. That would be a lot of a lot easier. That's I don't know I just I just don't understand how like I don't know I I feel like number one I feel like it's gonna be bad writing wise because it's just gonna let people do shit and then when they don't do something that could solve the problem very easily we're just gonna be upset because they could have done it because there's no limits apparently to what they can do as long as they can imagine it so it's so it's like uh, uh Full metal alchemist alchemy without the equivalent exchange rule. Right, which is the which is the reason why that works. The reason why that works is that we know there's yeah. a cost to it, and then if they if we have an effect that's super huge, we know that they're going to need a lot of material, and then they can't they, they can't just come up with that shit. They need to prepare. Right here, yeah. uh, like you can you can just do shit apparently. Um. Like, even moving aside from the solution to this question being you pick up every single drop of rain and then you slow down its descent until it, it doesn't fall anymore. You just drop it on the floor. Like, if you look... Okay, whatever. That, that's cool. Whatever. Just keep going. <laughs> but, I, but I feel... I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about how Higashide is going to deal with this because I feel like it's going to make everybody upset. Unless he sets up, like, a very good maybe, limitation. Maybe it was just just in the train, you know, he said, ah, whatever, it's, it's just a train yard. I exhaled a sigh, feeling like my very soul could come rushing out of my mouth at any second. With my whole body weary and exhausted from combat, I couldn't help but collapse onto my knees. I got rid of the magically created vines. The battle seemed to have come to an end. I also don't really like how Setsuna became good enough in two days. You know? Like, 30 minutes of training uh, in reader time. Uh, I wish his studying was like that. So real, dude. For real. Belial spoke with a tone of casual conversation. But it is. 
it in for you, my boo. <laughs> What, what, can you get prepared for your set Yeah, I can become the, the new LMX, uh, LMX. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Can't you? That's all right. Fuck you, my man. The Demon Lord smiled again, officially bringing our training session to a close. Belial shrugged. Well, we might have good enough magic, but we haven't unlocked our noble phantasm yet. So, I'm assuming that that's going to be very impressive. He was right. In order to get stronger, I needed to deepen my knowledge of magic. Simple training wouldn't help me achieve that. Either way, I comprehended the basics. All that was left is testing it out in live combat. Belial threw a glance at Lilith. Oh, collective responsibility now. We're getting into jurisprudence? Let's get it, bro. I know a guy. For some reason, hostility rang clear in Lilith's tone as she responded. Yay, we got perverted teacher. Let's go, perverted teacher. Lilith nearly face palmed. Well, that's what he kind of is. そのままあの、その時までに私たちにどんなコスプレをさせるか決めておいてちょうだいね。うん。やるのか。そう。この。オッケー。ラジエルとソラミなら何だってやってくれるって信じてる。I don't think that's true. Sorami maybe. I think Sorami would just use one of those casually, you know. Do you remember the eyes of Rajo after the the maid cosplay? Yeah. Yeah. She was terrified. <laughs> she, she was she was crying so bad. <laughs> yeah, she was about to cry. She was like, "Oh my god, I want to cry!" Holy shit! Did I it? mean, you could just ask Esther to do it, you know? Exactly. The exactly. Guy's he, the guy is pretty hot. He's a uh, what is it that? <laughs> Suddenly so called him a cross dresser. <laughs> yes. Oh man. It didn't seem like she herself had any intention of doing it though. Positively ecstatic, Belial hurried off toward the library. I was not particularly fond of gambling. Besides, the answer appeared to have been quite evident, so there was no point to it. Lilith peered at me with a curious look in her eyes. I averted my gaze, but after enduring her scrutinizing gaze for a few seconds, I had to ask if there was a problem. Did you not? Why? Okay, Lil. Okay, okay, man. She ran a finger along my cheeks. Well, I had that impression when he had, when he had that moment with his third eye opening. Like I felt like that was the realization that he was needing. Um, but, but I guess not. Um, when he, when he, when he did the the thing of like, uh, I now know I I need to feel pain. I thought that that might be it. 
Uh, but I guess that wasn't it either, so. Hmm. A faint giggle escaped the demon's lips. Oh, sorry for all the interruptions, too. A handful of days had passed since we braved the second stratum. I felt my heart awash with a series of peculiar sensations <laughs> as I looked at the lunchbox Raziel had prepared for me. I kind of miss you, Raziel. <laughs> That's true, yeah. In the end, as Raziel couldn't prepare the meal on her own, she swallowed her pride and asked Sorami to help. She neither hesitated nor made fun of her, nor felt the need to ask why Raziel wanted to cook. He was Japanese, so Raziel assumed that making the meal like that would be fine. She certainly did not forget about Lilith, though. Rice balls, fried chicken, tamagoyaki, then two apples for dessert cut up into rabbit shapes. She was confident that she could pull it off. She would have preferred to give him uh, to give it to him while they were, still had some time off at the academy, but. Is this foreshadowing? Are we gonna die? I'm feeling I'm feeling some dark vibes right now. I'm not feeling good. Kugutsu Sodami, a girl of no outstanding features, your everyday human who got dragged into Tokyo Babble by pure chance, with the odds that uh, of which. Uh, rivaled that of winning the lottery. She was also in possession of Gatel's eyes, a powerless young girl who set out on her pilgrimage, and yet she and Setsuna formed the core of their group. Sorami was able to easily stand up to and engage with the two highest powers of Tokyo Babel, Astaroth and Kamael. She seemed to not feel fear the way others did, and she had a talent for cooking. Raziel, even with all human knowledge at her disposal, was unable to do what she did and ended up begging her for help. Raziel wondered if she should feel humiliated. A proud angel no doubt would have, but she knew that mere knowledge and actual reality were clearly different beasts. The difference between memorizing a recipe and cooking the meal were nine day. Raziel did, however, find the situation somewhat vexing, not because Sorami could do something the angel had failed to master, but rather that she couldn't help feeling like she had asked for help from a rival. In any event, Raziel would have time later to sort out these peculiar feelings of hers. They would finally move on to the third stratum today. She needed to prepare for that journey. Raziel handed her a pendant crafted in the image of Gabriel's horn. It was imbued with the power of water. Raziel wasn't quite sure whether or not Sorami had heard her. Either way, she seemed jubilant with her new gift and proceeded to try it on right away. Raziel nodded. Much like last time, all three of them, Sorami, Raziel, and Lilith, would support him in his efforts. But that wouldn't make the journey any easier. One of them would need to protect Sorami. Lilith made it absolutely clear she wouldn't do it, but Raziel was certain she could change her mind if the situation turned desperate. And from the uh, third stratum onwards, they would also need to make sure not to let their minds succumb to madness. Gabriel's pendant held the power not only to protect Sorami from fire, but from mental contamination as well. On the other hand, most prior pilgrims had, wear, uh, had all worn accessories of similar nature, so Raziel questioned whether or not there was any point to it at all. To have one's mind claimed by madness, pilgrims in the past began to feel worse soon after they had toppled the second stratum. They would complain of headaches, hallucinations, hearing things, and experiencing overwhelming emotion. Upon reaching the fourth stratum, they would go undergo physical, uh, uh, visible physical changes as well, such as sprouting wings resembling that of an angels or demons, or gaining powers that could manipulate their surroundings. They would be reborn as masters around this time. Consequently, not a single human had managed to reach the fifth stratum up until now. They had to make sure this succeeded, and Raziel needed to hand her box lunch over to Setsuna. She hoped it would be to his liking. Uh, 
Raziel was a complete loss, unable to explain her feelings. She knew that the third stratum was their top priority, yet a small portion, or maybe even two, of her mind simply couldn't let go of that lunchbox. Raziel decided to put her book out of her mind and redirect the rest of her attention to solving the problem of the third stratum. The girls met up with Setsuna and the others, then set out on their journey to the third stratum, hoping to eventually pave the way toward heaven. Same as before, we opened the gates with two keys, one of gold and one of silver. However, we soon noted a definite change compared to last time. Yeah, because you have the fucking amulet. Sarami's pendant was made in the shape of Gabriel's horn, one of the symbols of the angel. It came imbued with the power of water and its effect was constantly active, able to shield the wearer from even the fiercest of temperatures. With my nano machines, I could partially restrain my respiratory functions. Having droplets of sweat trickle down my forehead in the heat of battle could easily spell my doom. As for the discomfort arising from the heat itself, my brain had to block it out. We reached the gates at the scalding air. Uh, drifted languidly to around us, creating waves of shimmering heat haze. How can you? I seized the handle without waiting for an answer. The heat no doubt left them without the strength to do so, and opened the gate. They made it to Marion. Uh, the heat intensified to no. the point where I... <laughs> no. <laughs> where no. I... Hell no. No. Hell no. Hell no. Oh, I feared it could actually scald my skin. <laughs> Either way, I continued pushing the gate open. As the door began, uh, was being held shut by something I could only assume was air pressure, I ended up tapping into the power of Taj Karawo, the god of might, in order to force it open. Beyond the gate, we were greeted by a city engulfed in flames. Specifically, we were in the Koraku district, somewhere close to Suidobash Station. Oh, that kind of me. <laughs> that kind of me of some place, if there is... One survivor there. What? With red hair? I don't know. Maybe there is a survival in the city. Oh. And he has oh, like you. Oh right, right, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that guy, yeah, that we, guy. We traveled back ten years in the past. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Some, some, sh some crazy shit is happening, and then. I don't know, he's just living right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Before us towered a colossal dome ravaged by fire. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Sodomy found herself at a loss for words. It wasn't just the dome, the entire district had been reduced to a sea of flames. Raziel, Lilith, and I all promptly erected protective magic barriers of water to shield us from the heat, which, by the way, had escalated to unbearable levels. <laughs> Just another day in Sao Paulo. Ah, that's so true, Bestie. <laughs> Just another day in Maranhão. <laughs> Just another day in Maranhão. I was in complete agreement with Sodomy's assessment. The flames showed no sign of dying down or even weakening. They kept burning with consistent intensity. The black smoke emerging from the fire blotted out the sky, darkening the heavens like it was the middle of the night. All in all, an astonishing sight. Lilith, Indeed. Lilith walked up to a nearby flame and touched it barehanded. Sodomy gasped in surprise, but the demon remained uh, unharmed due to the shielding effects of the water barrier. Her words filled me with an inexplicable feeling of discomfort, eternal hellfire, a perpetual torrent of flames. Something like that had no place in this world. You know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny that Adam proved himself so much stronger than we were, but he hasn't cleared the third stratum yet. I wonder if he's waiting for us to do it to humiliate us again. Or if he just doesn't give Maybe, a fuck. I don't know. Perhaps he has, like, very specific orders 
something like this. Right. Lilith shrugged, then glanced in the direction of the dome. The dome's roof had long since perished to the flames, its massive shape reminiscent of an oversized stove. If hell had a stove, it would have looked like this, that much I was certain of. Similarly, if the fire-ravaged construct had a king of its own, he must have resided somewhere within, alone in complete solitude, watching as his kingdom burned to ashes. For a moment, I felt something disrupt my vision. It's the fucking Grail Tower! It's the fucking Grail Tower. It's Sh Shiro's here. Oh, He's no. the master. Oh no! <laughs> After the third stratum, visual hallucinations were among the first symptoms of mental collapse. Careful. A hallucination careful. of that caliber would not gonna... hinder me. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. You're gonna hear uh, and Yorokobish. Yorokobish. <laughs> A hallucination of that caliber would not hinder me just yet. What I experienced just now must have been caused by the influence of the Stratum's master. Still, just to be on the safe side, I isolated a blank region in my mind, completely separate from my normal consciousness, so I could effectively quarantine all incoming contamination in here. Sodomi was pressing her hand against her head. Noticing it, Lilith rushed up to the girl and placed a hand on her shoulder. Okay, how much do you guys want to bet that we're gonna have to fight Sodomi eventually? Fight Sodomi? Yeah, if she like, goes like, crazy. Like yeah, yeah, maybe she gets possessed by Ghetto. Cause, cause all the all the masters embody the 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 the, the angel, right? That they're that that's my impression. Or at least if if uh. Fuck, what was your name? If the last one that we fought is anything to go by, uh, they transform and then they kind of become like the the, the spirit you that was associated with them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think her name was Kurum, something like that. I feel, I feel like maybe, maybe since Sodomi is showing signs of insanity, maybe like a couple strata from now she's going to lose it. And then Gatel is gonna take back over. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I'm just thinking, but. I mean, the power she has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the power she has is kind of maddening when you think about it. This is a forbidden knowledge, knowledge that human eyes cannot see. Uh, student see in fact it is the truth behind everything mm -hmm. it, it is kind of maddening so if she's not uh, possessed like ghetto in some way she is she'll probably just see the things the way she did and eventually reach a point a right where she, point she's and, around a similar mind frame yeah yeah it, it would be, it would be sad, but it would be pretty dope. Right. Silencing her anxiety, Sodomi placed her hand on Lilith's head. <laughs> Color returned to Sodomi's complexion. It appears she really was all right, much like she had claimed, for now at least. <laughs> Just as I was about to leap into the skies, I felt someone pull on the cuff of my uniform. For some reason, both Sodomi and Lilith retreated about three steps from where Raziel and I were standing. The angel looked into my eyes while sheepishly twiddling her fingers. I can't believe it. <laughs> I love Raziel so much, bro. Oh but my god. She nodded. Obento. But what about it? Fuck! She. she <laughs> Sets I mean, Okay, okay. At, at this least is the only. Gonna... You can talk, my book. Go, go on, go on. At, at least it's not gonna get told, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, I mean, true. <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. Okay, this is the only time that I defend Setsu. Just because of the situation. This is the only time that the session makes sense. 
戻ってきたら一緒に。おー、ベイビー。あ、そうしよう。As Raziel smiled, I gave her an awfully confused nod. <laughs> Fuck up! Raziel turned oddly dispirited. In response, Lilith and Sodami's expressions distorted with unbridled fury. They seemed wanting, seemingly wanted me to continue the conversation for some reason. Raziel's mood brightened in an instant. She threw a playful wink my way. Oh, I suppose I would find out when the time came then. Yes! Let's go, dude. A curt, straightforward answer, just as always. Her expression, on the other hand, Is brighter than I'd ever seen it. I pushed myself away from the ground and took to the sky, soaring straight towards Tokyo Dome. Flames erupted in all directions, a raging inferno、uh, burning bright like a veil of crimson. I soared upwards, going as high as I possibly could, and gazed,、uh, cast my gaze on the sports field. The moment I did, I felt a terrible chill surge through my body, even in the midst of the boiling heat. Fear. My heart raced in my chest like a locomotive. Could I have felt that chill?、Uh, could I have felt that chill due to the sheer abnormality of the sight I now beheld? Clutching my chest, I inspected my surroundings and spotted several burnt corpses down below.、Uh, they weren't simply dead bodies, though. They were all impaled on massive stakes. The way their bodies burned remind me as horrible as that might sound on, of meat on a skewer. <laughs> to my horror, I watched the corpses wriggled in the midst of the flames. Wriggled? Impossible. Impossible. They were still alive. As the screams echoed throughout the area, the impaled victims all began desperately squirming on their stakes. <laughs> the overwhelming repulsive wretchedness of it all made my stomach turn. I was unable to tell whether those people still lived or if they were being kept alive by something. They might very well have been dead men wriggling to a puppeteer's tune, or perhaps slaves to some other unknown force. What I didn't know was that I needed to find and defeat the master of this stratum as soon as possible. I made myself focus on something else.、Uh, these people were simply background scenery, their cries of terror near auditory hallucinations. I exiled a horrific sight to a distant corner of my mind so it wouldn't hinder me during combat. I made my way to the center, surrounded at all angles by flames violent enough to shroud my vision, and there was someone standing at the baseball mound. It was without a doubt the master of the stratum, either Hinoya Wataru or his guardian demon. I couldn't believe my eyes and simply stared in awe at what I、uh, was seeing, forgetting for a moment even the oppressive heat. Someone had stabbed Hinoya Wataru with a sword. Someone had killed the man who was supposed to be the master of this entire realm. Someone who could easily trample even a man as terrifying as the firefly at Hinoya Wataru, crushing him like a child. What a discarded toy. It was a young man of smallish frame, his back adorned by six wings of azure fire. The number of wings he possessed indicated that he belonged to the Order of Seraphs, one of the higher ranking angels of the celestial hierarchy. After nonchalantly tossing Hinoe Wataru's lifeless body aside, he turned to look at me. And so, our eyes met. He let out a laugh. His smile broadened as he uttered the words, prompting me to involuntarily retreat back a few steps. A person who could very well have been Hinoe Wataru had just been killed by him. Who in the world was he? The moment he uttered those words, the boy's identity became clear as day. He was no ordinary being. 
he had to be one of the four master angels, the one bearing the title of the flame of God. Does this is this Shinji's voice from FSM? I don't think so. He looked upon what me. What do you think? What? what do you think, Mako? What do you think, Mako? I don't think they're similar. Yeah. I don't know. I felt. I felt like the. Whatever. He looked upon me with the hollow gaze. His wait, smile wait. grim, like the dark whoa, whoa. of midnight. What class of angel does he belong to? He's one of the. He's a seraph. Oh, is that? Is that like the? That angel that is described as a huge ring in John's book? That is not. I don't believe so, no. Apocalypse? No. No. That's a shame. Um, I think it's complicated, but Seraphim. Uh, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll get into it next time just to make sure that I'm not speaking bullshit. But Uriel uh, was found originally, I believe, in Enoch. Uh, in the Book of Enoch, and then he kind of got co-opted by Catholics uh, as one of the one of the big important angels of Catholicism. Uh, but he does not make a canonical biblical appearance. I don't think. I think he might show up in he shows up in Enoch for sure, and I think he also shows up in uh, Tobit, which is one of the Catholic uh, deuterocanonical books. But, but I might also be wrong on that. Um, he looked upon me with a hollow gaze, his smile grim like the dark of midnight. His words drilled into my heart like the echo of a joyous gospel. That was a dangerous sign, so I probably sealed his words away in that isolated corner of my mind to protect myself from mental contamination. In the end, I, mean, uh, I managed to regain my composure. Uriel stepped forward. His intentions, whether he was friend or foe, were clear as day. I pulled out the Picati sword. According to Lilith, the fact that I had now learned to control magic should have amplified its power. And indeed, just holding it in my hand allowed me to feel the tremendous amount of magical energy coursing through its blade. Even I found myself surprised. Did it hold power equal, equaling that of Uriel, though? The answer was no. Uriel's expression contorted with anger as his mouth gave to open. The moment that scream left his lips, I found my body blown clear away by a magical force of astonishing magnitude, rolling and tumbling backwards at high speed. As he blew me away, I crashed into a row of audience seats, destroying everything in my path, be it plastic chairs, the metal railing, or the concrete steps, finding my body half-embedded in the ground. That was no attack. All he did was scream. The sheer horror of that realization sent a chill down my spine. His very scream displayed power enough to send me flying. His rank as one of the four greats came as no surprise indeed. However, he seemed to have long since been robbed of all shred of reason and intelligence. The echo of his frenzied cries permeated the heat, filling me with dread. I grated my teeth and fought back against it, isolating the fear. I rose to my feet and after a few moments of hesitation chose to summon a, the sin of sloth. A large wave of molten gold rained down on him all at once. Uriel, however, evaporated it all with a single wave of its hand. And just like that I lost sight of him. Even if I had failed to detect him with my eyes, I could still sense the vector of his magical energies to pinpoint his location, which was... I had two options, to leap or to counterattack. I chose the latter. I flung my blade to the right without leaving time for myself to even see what was there. A clean hit! <laughs> it's 
Uriel stopped my blade with his bare hands as droplets of fresh blood trickled down to the concrete floor below, letting out a sizzling noise as they reached the ground. A moment later, the temperatures around us rose to unimaginable heights. I used all my power to erect a protective water barrier, but its soothing influence lasted a mere heartbeat. Uriel's violent blast sent me flying to the skies. A wave of intense azure flame lashed out of Uriel's wings, coiling into a tornado as it crashed on me. The attack sent me flying all the way to the large road stretching outside the dome. The fact that none of my limbs were thrown off in the blast bordered on the miraculous, no doubt an effect of the astounding amount of magic I used up in the process. I landed near the three girls and heard Sodomi gasp in surprise. Setsuna! Analyzing combat prowess, it was the three of us against Uriel on his own. Although we had the advantage in terms of sheer numbers, he exceeded us in raw power. In conclusion, the chances of defeat remained staggeringly high. Uriel. Lilith uttered his name with a trembling voice. Sodomi attempted to rush to my side, but the demon managed to hold her back. Setsuna! Setsuna! I nodded at her to signal that I was alright. As Raziel propped me up, Uriel took, the time, uh, took his time flying over to us, seizing us with his wicked glare. I briefly exchanged looks with Lilith. She nodded, then took Sodomi and retreated to a safe distance. Uriel. His expression, the very air around him, and above all else his volcanic zeal. Uriel turned to Raziel, his lips curling into a smile. <laughs> Riel's words flowed calm and serene as he clutched his head with both hands, a touch of fury blending into his madness. <laughs> his question must have chilled Raziel to the very core, even as she stood in the midst of flames. <laughs> I wonder if this is delu uh, his, him being delusional, or if it's referencing the shit that uh, Raziel uh, repressed, the memories that she repressed, you know? I wonder if she did something Maybe. Uh, I don't know. during the, the Great Calamity. Uriel spread his arms wide, brimming with hostility and bloodlust. This, this thing was a monster. The terrifying intensity of his madness made me certain of that. Even the headache and the hallucination I experienced before came bubbling back up. Out of my way, I have no time for you. She hadn't done a thing. Raziel lacked something critical to be able to assert that claim, her memories, once pertaining to the Divine Calamity, things she should have never forgotten. Oh, no shit. No shit. <laughs> Over one. I, 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 I was thinking it. And apparently, the voice actor for Uriel is Bakugo from My Hero Academia. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh, yeah, that's where I know his voice from. No shit, man. <laughs> Overwhelmed, Raziel oh took- Oh Apparently he's also that white wolf guy from the Machi. Okay. Oh, he's that guy from- Okay, I know who He's from the- The main wife who- uh, Clan. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, yeah, I know. The guy- The guy got a solid curriculum, you know? Yeah. 
His, his, he's famous. He's also good. I, I was sure that I had heard him before, I just wasn't connecting the, the voice. Yeah, apparently he's also the protagonist from Blue Exorcist. I, I don't remember his name. Oh, it is... Oh, I can't remember. Oh. Anyway, we're getting distracted. Is yeah. it better we head back to the reading? Overwhelmed, Raziel yeah. took a step backwards. Uriel's expression of fury abruptly shifted to that of profound joy. Oh! Achievement unlocked. Although Uriel's chaotic train of thought was difficult to follow, Raziel nonetheless found herself frozen in place upon hearing that one certain word. Raziel questioned him as her whole body trembled with fear. Uriel flashed a maddened smile and pointed straight up at the sky. So the sixth stratum was Kanda. Raziel's tone had turned ice cold. Oh shit, are we seeing Raziel unchained, bro? Oh,お前。ただ、決意を新たにするだけ。Uriel's oh, oh, oh. body trembled upon really, uh, hearing Raziel's grim proclamation, and then he roared with laughter. <laughs> His rage exploded. Suddenly, Uriel's expression changed to one of uncertainty. Oddly enough, Uriel found himself puzzled by his own words. As Raziel and I stared at him in confusion, he quickly shook his head and went on to his usual tone. I felt my heart race faster as he uttered that one word. Heaven. Was Uriel there once? A wonderful place. If that were truly the case, then. I guess would have been work. His duty as the flame of God was to monitor the gates of hell and punish sinners. That would explain why he left heaven. Hmm. If you're in despair, darken his gaze now, robbing it of his former near ecstatic madness. Uriel crouched on the ground, clutching his head with both hands. What the fuck did Raziel do? Sensing, sensing a lust for battle from the maddened angel, I tightened my grip on the Picati sword. As Uriel kept mumbling to himself, I he once again stood up and began approaching us. Don't. 
叩き殺すひねり殺す切り殺すそうしなければそうしなければならないんだそうだって Raziel pulled out her tablet, connecting its cable to her own wrist. Maybe Raziel tried the, the way to happen, something like it. I don't know, I, it just came up in my mind. Destroy the what? I, the way to the heaven. I don't oh. know. Think, uh, let's think about bridge, you know? Right. That would lead to, to heaven, and she had to destroy right. it. The stairway to heaven? The stairway to right? heaven, yeah. Not trying the, the heaven, but trying to breed the least to heaven, you know. So no one could enter. I don't know why that would right force Uriel the... to leave, though. What? Oh, I don't. What? I don't know why that would force Uriel to leave. Maybe she. I don't know. Maybe maybe Uriel go down so he could somehow. Try to remake the bridge, something like it. You know, maybe. I, I just thought of it because of the the bubble. You know what? And what? I thought you can you can tell. So yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Wait, I, I'm I'm gonna take this to just say. Uh, apparently, Jeff tells voice actors that to all. And uh, so impressed by is a stoleful from, from Fate Apocrypha. Oh, that's awesome, actually. And, and Lilith. Oh, god, I forgot to show it. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Lilith, uh, the voice actress of Lilith, voiced Mordred in a Fate Grand Order movie. Okay. I just wanted to say that. Okay. okay. I think it's it amazing. Um, the what, did you want to say to you what I was going to say is that maybe Raziel in contrast to, to who she tries to be now very faithful and, and, and pure maybe she started a new rebellion like she was another Lucifer figure uh, maybe. and that got so bad that it forced the angels to leave Maybe she's the cause of God closing the gates of heaven. Oh my god. It can be it. It can be it. That could be I it. That she, she, she would be the one who destroyed the, the bridge. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe because of some God artist and then she had to clear her memory up right after that. You know. I don't know. So, like... Yeah, my old memory was also open. Well, uh, they say that a lot of the angels and demons forgot things from c the Calamity time. But why did they forget the those things, you know? I wonder. I mean, yeah. we... Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Raziel was doing right. Right. And then again, we, we need to also remember that uh, Lucifer is missing, and we don't know anything about what's going on with that, so... Yeah, that's true. Raziel pulled out her tablet, connecting its cable to her own wrist. Raziel's gaze was as cold as ice, her entire being overflowing with tremendous amounts of magical energy. In the amount of time it took for me to inhale the then exhale a breath, Raziel had already lunged at Uriel. Her fist landed a clean hit on the other angel. <laughs> Uriel exploded with the elated fury while shooting azure flames in Raziel's direction, who despite taking a direct hit that sent her flying backwards recovered soon after. I immediately responded to her, mobilizing my magic reserves to call forth the power of the Pakati sword. The beast materialized in the world, bearing its terrible fangs at Uriel. 
Uriel latched onto the nape of the colossal beast, crushing it without a shred of hesitation. As he once again turned his attention back to me, it was Raziel's turn to launch an attack. The very ground Uriel stood on turned to water, extinguishing the nearby flames while blanketing the whole world or the whole area with coal air. Uriel's roar echoed throughout the air. As Raziel was blown far into the distance, Uriel turned his attention back on me, gaze overflowing with contempt. And with that, I mustered all my strength to hurl the Prakati sword in Uriel's direction. <laughs> if this was an ordinary blade, Uriel could easily deflect it without breaking a sweat. However, the blade I wielded once belonged to Uriel himself. This forced him to hesitate for just a heartbeat, knowing that this could very well be his only chance to retrieve it. He should not have done that. He should have deflected the sword, then calmly picked it up once he had either killed or immobilized me. The reason behind Uriel's hesitation was twofold. First off, I began swiftly advancing at him. Secondly, he had almost, uh, most likely never found himself in a situation like this before. Aside from combat being a series of rapid decision making, it also depended heavily on how each participant interpreted said choices and how swiftly they could derive an optimal solution in the heat of battle. That was the natural conclusion I had myself arrived at after fighting Getel, Abdiel, and Belial. Each of my opponents displayed monstrous prowess. One wrong move could invite a swift, uh, swift death. Unless I prepared myself, I would only end up buckling under the intense pain. I speculated that Uriel had never once wrestled with such thoughts. To him, who had only been born a powerful angel, combat merely meant instilling fear in his enemies as he trampled them underfoot with overwhelming power. That fact had become evident from the way he fought, in which case, defeating Uriel meant stirring panic, bewilderment, and hesitation in his heart. <clears throat> I amplified my speed through the power of air while tapping into the earth to strengthen my internal weapons. My right arm swelled in size, crashing into Uriel's jaw in a powerful See. uppercut. Just as I raised my fist to land a follow-up blow, Uriel slammed a kick into my abdomen that sent me flying. <laughs> Grabbing me by the neck, Uriel slammed me into the asphalt below, and as if driven by a maddening com uh, compulsion, repeated it again and again. Raziel leapt our way, intent on doing something to help. However, Uriel held up my, my body to shield himself from the female angel. With my neck being squeezed tighter and tighter, I felt my consciousness fade, and so did the pain. I found myself liberated from the jaws of fire and the crippling sensation of having my neck crushed. I made a feeble attempt to break free from his grasp to no avail. My strength had all but left me. I would soon die here, and I might even be content with that outcome. However, I was just ready, just as I was ready to succumb to that train of thought, I felt a peculiar chill rush through my entire body. Almost as if someone had peeked into my mind. As my vision began to fade, Uriel's gaze, the mixture of bloodlust and pure disgust, pierced into me. He must have peeked into my it? memories. He said it. He spewed one abusive expletive after another, yet I was bothered by not a syllable of it. I had already leveled at myself all the wicked language I could think of, cursing my own existing, loathing what I had done. And as such, only one objective burned vividly in my mind now, finding a way to overcome the obstacle that was Uriel. I needed to think of nothing else. Using Takemikadzch, the god of thunder, would wield the, uh, yield no results here. Uriel's name may have indicated the flame of God, yet the ancient scriptures of Judaism treated it as lightning. Hinokagutsuchi, the god of flames, would similarly be out of the question. My opponent was fire incarnate. I would never be able to surpass him, not even by tapping into magic. The god of might, then, unlikely. The sheer strength he slammed me into the ground with a short while ago far exceeded the boost I could gain from the power of Tajkarawo. As my mind sifted through the various strategies that could be utilized in defeating Uriel, every single possibility gave back a clear error message. None of them would work. In a matter of seconds he would break my neck, this much was certain. 
So what was I to do? How was I supposed to act? How? Water burst forth right next to me where Uriel was standing, biting into his elbow like a serpent. However, a single swing of his arm sent the water serpent to oblivion. He then flashed a satisfying grin. In one broad swing, Uriel had held my body aloft and hurled it towards Raziel. As I crashed into Raziel, the two of us were blown away, were blown all the way back to the Tokyo Dome. I only blacked out for a mere second, but that period of time was more than enough for Uriel to move to an elevated position. The situation had just turned from bad to worse. Displaying magical prowess surpassing what I had expected, uh, experienced during my training session with Belial, Uriel brandished a huge metal pillar about three meters in height. It was a massive door bolt. I assumed it had been used to bar the gates of hell to protect the angel's many divine secrets. <laughs> The colossal pillar in Uriel's grasp split open to the uh, myriad parts, each fragment imbued with, the uh, with terrifying magical power. I couldn't run. Raziel's body had been weakened from the damage she sustained while I crashed into her, rendering her unable to move. What little chance I may have had of escaping, I had now cast it all aside. I threw my arms wide open, sheltering her, feeling strangely refreshed, yet not intoxicated. If anything, I was completely calm and at ease. This had to be my raison d'être, to die for the sake of another, without obstructive thoughts and hindering feelings. Accompanied by a deafening roar, the pillar fragments discharged a bolt of fierce lightning. My body was pierced, my flesh mercilessly ravaged by high-voltage electricity. A feeling of intense numbness rushed along my right elbow, left knee, left shoulder, right ankle, my side, my left wrist, and then exploded with pain. I felt myself being eroded away. A violent scream filled my ears. Relieved that I had managed to protect her, I turned to smile at Raziel, yet found myself taken aback by her horror-stricken expression. Could I really say that I had protected her? Raziel should have used the time I'd bought her and escaped. I firmly believed she would do that. However, she collapsed on her knees, refusing to leave my side. I couldn't believe it. I didn't want to. I recalled what Belial had taught me about proclaiming one's raison d'être, about discharging a large amount of magic to project one's inner world into the outside world. There had to be a downtime during that process. I'm begging you, flee while there's still... <laughs> Raziel violently shook her head and clung onto me, almost like an unruly child refusing to let go of their mother. Another few seconds and Uriel would fully recover. Once that time came, he would muster all of his magic to kill both me and Raziel. I calculated the likelihood of such an outcome to be 98%, certainly the odds, uh, the kind of odds that would drive one to despair. But I would have none of it. Oh shit. It's time. Blood rushed up my throat, but I gulped it back down. I struggled to my feet, my ankles still in ruin while enduring unimaginable pain. Unable to maintain my balance, I collapsed back onto my knees. 
I needed to protect them. Mankind, the angels, the demons, all living things. God, through mankind's desires, I once bore that name, but no longer. I stood here today as a mortal man, a weapon, machine, and a slave. My mission was to protect Lilith, Sodomy, and Raziel, a duty I carried out as best I could. But now, it was no longer within my capabilities. Uriel's strike had put me on the verge of death, and I would be struck down with by a blow truly befitting one of the four master angels. My heart would soon beat its last. My mind had comprehended its impending demise. A reason for being. I once thought that accomplishing my mission or keeping my companion safe would stand as my raison d'être. In the end, I was both right and wrong. This much I could say. I did not come this far, nor did I shoulder all of this sin, only to have it end on this accursed third stratum. I grit my teeth, struggling to endure the crippling pain. I had to stand up. I had to face him in battle and survive the ordeal. To protect Raziel, I had to overturn the odds, no matter what. A click. Something resounded deep within me. A cogwheel and mechanical gears sprang to life in the depths of my soul, where once there had been nothing. My heart, my lungs, muscles, and brain all came alive once more, driven by a singular purpose. To live. To survive. To fight and prevail, to fulfill that purpose, I needed something, a blade coated in sorcery, its lethal swing ready to fell all in its path, or a shield of dazzling crystal, stalwart and unflinching against even the most terrifying of odds. No. I needed no weapons or armor, for I could wield neither. Uriel was a veritable monster. Fatal deficiency in my own analytical capabilities prevented me from conjuring up armaments that could surpass his strength or, ev or protective equipment that might withstand his fury. There existed several requirements before I could truly become invincible. Requirements I had yet to fulfill. And the one thing that could serve me best in this situation were legs that would carry me beyond space and time. Create it, conjure it, will it into existence with utmost haste, tap into the power slumbering within you. All I had to do was apprehend the dimensional theory and construct a mechanism that could function within its framework. Everything I was required was right here. If not, I simply had to force it into existence. That was as far as I could go, yet it was more than enough. I clung onto the thin glimmer of the theory I had managed to unearth desperate not to let go, in order to live and to survive and to protect. <laughs> Space itself had been distorted. A number of thin cracks running along reality, light seeping in through their slits. I chose one and grabbed Raziel by the arm. <laughs> Moments before I leapt into the dimensional tear, I spotted Lilith in the distance. She threw something my way. I caught it without even checking what it was, then proceeded through the tear. Screaming various obscenities our way, Uriel leapt inside the tear in pursuit, but that was as far as he could go. This place was merely a narrow rift existing within the crevice of reality. Its very existence crawled and coiled in the form of a shapeless line, lacking in earth and sky, its coordinates fickle at best. Without a focused mind, it became difficult to tell whether one was even advancing or retreating through this realm. Either way, I took Raziel by the hand and proceeded forward, soaring onwards with a renewed determination. That was my foremost concern. In your dreams, Uriel. I glanced down at my feet, spotting that they had sprouted a series of mechanical wings. Relying on them, I quickened my pace, escaping the angel's clutches. Suppose I mustered every last drop of strength I still had left, sacrificing many a thing in the process. Yet that would still not guarantee the maddened angel's demise. Even if it did, there would be no meaning to it. That was the conclusion I had arrived at. The train of thought that now drove me to flee like a coward. In order to keep living, surviving, and protecting others, I fled and fled as swift as the wind, finally leaping into another dimensional rift. Jimmy! Though Uriel was hot on our heels in pursuit, the, cliff, uh, the rift closed a mere heartbeat before he could enter it. As I glanced back, his eyes met mine through the tiny crevice before it closed out for good. I silently looked him in the eye, enduring the abuse and the explosive waves of unchained bloodlust. I wonder if we... If we bound him there. Is he is he able to live uh, to 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 leave? I think he is. The rift finally closed is up. 
Oh, are you going to say Maybe? something, Mapo? No, no, I, I was just uh, replying to unlimited uh, statement. I is he able to? I wonder. Well, maybe he can I go mean, back, but he can't come here. He 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 has since he's insane. He's gonna have a hard time going anywhere, though, right? Yeah, probably. Probably he just like sees to think something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I just got the feeling we won't be seeing this guy in this route anymore. Maybe. The rift finally closed up, giving us as much needed time to take in our surroundings. Wonder where we are. We were inside Tokyo Babel, that much was certain, and in a place other than the first, second, or third strata. Could possibly have been a stratum beyond there, uh, somewhere between the fourth and the seventh. Oh, I wonder if we're in six to find Raziel's book. It could be, maybe. Oh my. Raziel no uh, me. nodded, pointing t at a nearby building in a very matter-of-fact way. Maybe Raziel returned my question with a puzzled look. Her words brought back some recent memories. My body was in terrible shape, tattered from head to toe. Pain soon returned as well, oh. now that my battle with Uriel was done and I had calmed down. Oh no, I guess that Setsuna will have to take off his shirt and let Razio stand his wounds. Oh, oh no. that's so bad. Such a shame. Oh. I guess there's no other choice, man. Huh? As, as, oh. as I collapsed onto the ground, Raziel hurriedly ran up to me. Oh, I was so sorry, no! Man. So oh. sad! As Raziel's magic began its work, a smile involuntarily crept onto my lips. Upon hearing my words, Raziel's expression ended up colored by a touch of discontent. For some reason, I found myself consciously making conversation, injecting remark after remark as Raziel kept working. I found it kind of adorable how she responded in a sulking tone, especially since her hands didn't even show a hint of stopping despite her words. She didn't even give me time to ask exactly what will be fine. And during the pain, I set all the nano machines coursing in my veins to work, ordering to be uh, ordering them to begin regenerating my body. Although we ended up stranded with just the two of us, I still found myself at ease. This place could be the 5th, 6th, or 7th stratum. If this was the 6th stratum, then the book of Kanda, then the book town of Kanda would have to be here. Driven by that possibility, Raziel soared even faster, but soon gave up on the idea. Among the rows of ruined buildings, she spotted a factory-like complex that still stood in decent shape. It's clearly not a bookshop, but rather... The Tsukiji Market, one of the finest fish markets in Japan. Needless to say, the place was completely deserted. However, all the fish were still neatly lined up at the stalls, lending the area a positively eerie atmosphere. Although people u often used the expression to have eyes like a dead fish, the way these things were lined up here seared the image of death into my mind. The place was laden with the stench of fish, something Raziel found somewhat difficult to endure. In any case, it had become clear that this wasn't the sixth stratum, provided Uriel spoke the truth. He most likely did. Even in madness, the angel had no reason to lie. As such, it stood to reason that this was either the fifth or the seventh stratum. There would have to be one way to make sure. To have a look on the outside of Tokyo Babel. 
Yeah, that would be far too dangerous. And Raziel feared getting swept off the soaring purgatory without a fully able Setsuna at her side. One thing was clear in her mind, though, that not a soul had been to this place since the foundation of Tokyo Babel. Yeah, here she was now, her and Tendo Setsuna. After a moment of delight, Raziel realized something of utmost importance. A place beyond the reach of angels, demons, and possibly even the Lord himself. This could very well have been a critical moment for her in more ways than one. And so she floated oh, onwards, no. that one thought never once leaving her mind. I oh, know they're all alone by themselves, bro. This is this is an all ages game. This is not Iroge. So if this was Iroge, I would say, oh, it's time for the sex, but it's not time for the sex. Sadly. I struggled to my Sadly. feet, confirming uh, the successful recovery of all essential components of my body bo uh, bones, muscles, skin, nerves, and veins. I clenched my fist and lightly tapped the ground with my feet. Yes. Another hour and I'd be as good as new. All I had to do uh, was signal to Raziel and decide how we should proceed from here. We had three options to consider. 1. Search for a way back to Pandora. 2. Wait un here until help arrives. Or 3. Keep pressing on. It was still far too early for 2. We, only had, uh, we would only need to consider it uh, if 1 and 3 became impossible to carry out, which ultimately left us with a choice between these two. Number one certainly felt the most ro uh, like the most reasonable option to pick, but I glanced down at the silver key in my palm, the one that once belonged to Sorami. Back in the day, Lilith must have hurled the key my way because she expected something like this to happen. Either way, how were we to proceed? Naturally, I would first hey, have to one. discuss it with Raziel. Yeah. An unlimited ask for a quick pause. Oh, okay. I, I hadn't noticed. Um, we're back. Now, naturally, I would first have to discuss it with Raziel, but I still felt I should give it some thought on my own, too. If this place turned out to be the seventh stratum, our choice was clear. We would press on and open the gates of heaven. We could easily bring an end to the struggle, and Sodomi wouldn't have to risk her life any longer. She could t return to the peaceful life she once had. Furthermore, no one else would have to become a pilgrim. I would be the last. But what if this place turned out to be the fifth or the sixth stratum? How are we to act then? That was a more difficult question to answer. Provided this was the sixth stratum, we could very well run into the book Raziel had desperately been searching for. In that case, we would need to make finding it our top priority. What if this was the fifth stratum then? It would, uh, would we search for the gates of the sixth and keep pressing onwards? After all, this place had no master overseeing it. If we reached the sixth stratum, Raziel's long cherished wish would be fulfilled. She could finally retrieve her book. The Sefer Raziel, a tome containing all divine knowledge of creation. A book she had written for herself then entrusted it to mankind as a show of faith. If at all possible, I wanted to fulfill that dream of hers. Setsuna. I greeted Raziel upon her return, then asked if she had found anything of note. I got my hopes up in vain. Either way, we now had to decide whether to retrace our steps or continue onwards. Raziel promptly froze in place. After a few moments, she suddenly seemed to have come to a sort of conclusion. Not exactly the most reassuring of replies. She silently shook her head. Back on the first stratum, we stepped outside to give Gatel's body to the sea. If this were by any chance the seventh stratum, we should be extremely close to Tokyo Babel Summit, a place not a soul had seen, let alone reached up till now. I had no reason to refuse. We both pushed ourselves away from the ground, leapt into the skies, and began flying side by side. Uh, 
見つかったのあなたが存在するべき理由は After a few moments of consideration, I gave her an, an uncertain nod. But, I'm not a little bit. I'm just 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 a little bit. Right.、Oh. An accidental slip of the tongue on my part. r a z e l kept staring at me, refusing to swallow any sort of excuse that might claim、uh, it was just her imagination. And so I gave in. She says that George they should go. <coughs> they should continue. Because if they are in the fifth situation, they can, if they continue go, going up, they will arrive at the sixth where、right. r a z e l wants to go. Right. And if they are in the seventh one, they said they are, but maybe they are. Anyway, if they are in the seventh one, there is just one more step so they can achieve their objectives. Right, exactly. Feeling like I'd just been liberated from a tremendous burden, my tone gradually shifted back to how it used to be. I produced a bitter smile, still uncertain how she would react to hearing about my past. She was an angel, after all. And also someone who never forcefully inquires about said past. But I think she started to suspect something. My powers, the way I talked and acted, and what little I had shared about my past, the world I used to call home. A world succumbed to endless conflict, having lost its final ray of hope. Talking about the past wasn't easy, but if, it need,、uh, but if the need arose, anyone would have strength enough to reveal it. However, I needed a different kind of strength, a different kind of resolve, in order to reveal my past to Raziel. I did not wish to be scorned, I did not wish her to fear me or become sad because of me. Those worries had been on my mind constantly. Just a l i t t l Urged on by Raziel, I ended up landing in the middle of the Tsukiji market. The stench of fish was somewhat unpleasant. What should we do? I think this fish has gone bad. I had a feeling Raziel was kind of、uh, giddy with excitement. Now that I think about it, there had been some trouble with foreign tourists at the t s u j i k i market、uh, a number of years ago. Yeah, I remember that when、uh, Logan Paul f- found、uh, the t s u k i j i market、oh, no. and he started riding、oh. on top of all the carriages and then he made it so that Japan made it illegal for tourists to visit t s u k i j i market. You still can't go there as a foreigner.、Uh, <laughs> that's not even a joke, <laughs> I'm being serious. That man destroyed yeah, Japan. I, I, I believe you. I, I remember the, the picture of Lagopo going in, the, in that forest. Going in the、know? jungle, yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Bro, how, how bad is this fish, though? Like, I'm sure it's not like, in, in edible shape. Truth be told, I did actually witness the work of a sushi cook once before. I should be able to mimic that easily enough. On the other hand, I didn't have the proper rice. Besides, Raziel blinked back at me in confusion. I seemed to have touched upon something thoroughly unexpected. <gasps> She thrust her hand into her pocket, trying desperately to fish out something. Um, not to be rude, but it clearly wouldn't be there. She pulled out a sword and then a shield, and her pocket must have connected to, ironically enough, a pocket dimension. She kept pulling item after item from it, various weapons, pieces of armor, as well as accessories, both seemingly important and useless, piling them up into a small mountain. What the? Relieved, she triumphantly held、uh, up the boxed lunch in question. Could you lose a thing if it was inside a pocket dimension? Also, what was she planning to do with the amount of bits and bobs accumulated behind her? We ended up finding a nearby sushi shop that still had its interior in good enough shape. Do you guys want to 
uh, stop here and leave the date scene for the next episode? Say the truth. Well, I, sure. I wanted to continue, but but I, I'm kind of sleepy. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I've, I'm worrying about. It's been two hours. Uh, I think yeah, I think it might be better but, if we <coughs> preserve this for the next episode. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. the best option. But say the truth. It was pretty, pretty good. I really want to just to, to know what will happen. I, I want to know which chamber we are, which stratum we are, if that's the case. Stratum we are. Uh, what the fuck is going to happen right next to that? What is this, what is this Uriel, you know? Maybe he will go up in the stratum just to, just to kill us. I don't know. Oh my god. Can you hear that? Yeah, some, somebody's car alarm is going off. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I, I really liked it too. I mean, I liked this part. I liked the, the later section of the of the battle with Uriel and the, the stuff with Raziel. I think the pacing is a little was a little weird on the training in the beginning of the exploration of, of the third strata. I don't know. Two days of training is yeah. capable to, to make him said to now most by his race on the tree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought I thought it was a little too fast uh, and kind of compressed. Uh, but now that we're back in kind of cool uh, slice of life zone, maybe maybe it's going to go down uh, to, to something a little more manageable. Uh, what's your... The truth. Oh, go ahead. To say the truth, uh, <coughs> maybe Tetra needs this kind of fast growing up. I don't know. It is like the adaptability, adaptability uh, power he has, something like it. We talked about this in some previous episodes. I don't remember which one. I think it was when we were talking about... It was when... No, no, no. I remember now. It was right after or right before we encountered uh, Ada in the school. Mm -hmm. Something like it. We are talking about it, about it. Yeah. And the other thing, I think uh, the power scan will, will grow like crazy right now. So right. Yeah. The carrots kind kind of need it. What's your take, Mapo? I mean, this episode fixed some of the problems I was having with the route of the open now. There was that um Razia was supposed to be the main girl and we had little sets you know, focusing on Razia specifically. Right. Like we had this shared interaction with the other girls and I just couldn't feel that it was Raziel's route. Because, yeah, they, they had some cute moments, but it was not char character driven, you know? Right. Yeah. It was not like Fate Stay Night in which the relationships, the relationship is always the focus of the story because it's a way of developing both parts. And although Re Razia was learning new things, that's now just wasn't into it, you know? He wasn't developing because of Razia. He was just there, right? This girl, that's a part of his life, and I think this this episode was nice in that kind of context because it really gave uh, more focus to Razio through Setsuna's perspective. I I like that it. it works for their relationship. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think the Razio Setsuna stuff was solid. I uh, I just got kind of turned off by some of the other stuff. Like the plot related stuff, separate from the character stuff, you know. Uh, I think I don't know. It, it's it's just weird pacing. I think that the training was a little short, uh, and I think o Uriel overstayed his welcome a little bit. Uh, not in the sense that I would rather he had less screen time, but in the sense that I think that uh, Higashide left in too much crazy speak that wasn't super useful. Uh, so it, it felt like he was just going on and on 
and it kind and it kind of like really killed the the momentum of the encounter before the fighting started. And then as soon as the fighting started, it stopped, and then they had another like really long exchange where nothing was happening other than in between like these huge monologues by Uriel. He would reveal something about Raziel, and then Raziel would go, "Oh, I can't, I can't believe it, but what next? And what next?" I felt like that was oddly it was it was awkwardly paced. Uh, I maybe like if. If Higashide had like had Raziel go with Setsuna to the to the the uh, to the stadium, and then as they were meeting Uriel, she had that conversation that she ended up having later, and then they substituted all the crazy talk to show that he's crazy with that useful like crazy talk and foreshadowing thing and then it just broke out into one long continuous fight uh, with both Raziel and Setsuna ultimately ending in the Hermes scene I feel like that would have been more effective uh, because the, the I, I feel I don't know just like the way that it ended up being here kind of felt to me a little awkward and, and odd I wasn't super enthralled by that, but as soon as the as the focus changed from the action, plot stuff, into the character centric, Raziel and Setsuna stuff, it immediately felt a lot more connected and better. I think, so. I don't know. It's kind of weird because I assumed that Higashide would be better at writing action, because that's all he does in Apocrypha. There's just a lot of fighting. Uh, and the character stuff is is kind of like, you know, left to the wayside, because it's not as important. There's too much shit going on. Uh, whereas here, uh, it really feels like the character stuff is just leagues ahead of the fighting. <laughs> in terms of, like, entertainment and, and cohesion. I don't know. What do, what do you think? What do you think, uh, Mapo? That's true. I mean, yeah, the painting is kind of odd. Uh, I hope it gets better in the other routes. Yeah. Because, yeah, the dialogue in this episode was kind of, uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is this. Uh, we've encountered up until now three mad characters. And I think there's a little that there's little variation on the definition of madness coming right. from these characters. So all they do is dream and say that they're gonna kill someone, right. uh, bathe their blood, and there's not think much to it. No, it's just the same definition of madness, and I think Uriel was pretty boring because we've already got two other examples that were far more interesting characters than him. Right. And yeah, I mean, kind of lost there. Well, ultimately, Uriel feels like a retread of Ghetto, uh, right? Where yeah. she's just fucking crazy. And you, and you hear her talking, it's like, oh, that's so fucking crazy. But then, like, whereas Gettel came at the, like, a slasher movie villain in a slasher movie setting, and there's all this tension and horror in the air, Uriel is just, oh my god, he's so crazy. And that's just kind of it. Like, Kuro Miyako, at least, that's her name. Um, Kuro Miyako at least had all the stuff of us meeting her and understanding why she was crazy. You know? Uh, and then that made you care, uh, even though her madness didn't necessarily super reflect the way or the reason why she was insane or the, the, the problems that she had to face. <coughs> Uriel just kind of got there without context. Um, and and he, you just see him talking. He's like, oh, that's so crazy. He's crazy. No one normal would speak like this. I don't know. 
Uh, I feel like I feel like uh, insanity could be written better and more diverse. Uh, yeah, like the the characters just go on uh, my world, my world, and then Uriel's like, oh God's, uh, is God's what? God's flame? Yeah. God's flame, God's flame, and then you have Miyako, my horse, my horse. Right. It just, it gets, it gets tiring. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like there, there are better ways to handle, to handle, to handle madness. Maybe, maybe Higashide just, I don't know. It, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not super impressed. I'm not super impressed by the masters. I'm kind of glad that we're gonna move past the masters, at some point, uh, as implied. We're gonna get back to them in the the routes, the other routes, right? So. Right, but I mean, of... like you know, at least we're gonna get some context on who the masters are. You know, uh, that might help give the the battles some emotional weight like it did with Kuromiyako where like the execution isn't awesome but at least you're invested in seeing that character finish their arc um you know uh, so that might help I think the lack of context with Uriel really just kind of made it feel out of place um, because he's definitely that's the thing like he's supposed to be this huge super powerful master angel uh, tens of thousands of years old uh, and, but but he doesn't feel more threatening than Gatel literal uh, a literal who uh you know, made up for this game that dies within the first few pages, right? Uh, because he has, like, a fraction of the context and a hundredth of the atmosphere. Uh, and I just, I just didn't buy it. it. Like, anything from the design to the presentation uh, to the dialogue... The voice acting even felt kind of like, you know, phoned in. Uh, which is different from the other di uh, stuff in, in the game. I feel like the dialogue has been excellent up until, like, this halfway point of the Raziel route. And the, the voice acting is phenomenal. But then it's starting to chug a little bit, I think. Um, I don't know. I'm expecting for a strong closer, though. Maybe, maybe Higashide is better. Uh, at beginnings and endings than he is at middles. Which would make sense, I guess, with Apocrypha in mind. Uh, where there's, like, this this whole thing, this whole mess going on in the middle, and then the ending is memorable, and the beginning is kind of memorable, I guess. But, uh -huh. Do you guys uh, have any other comments? No, really. I will take Mampo's silence. Oh, are you? I, I, I got nothing of substance to say. Okay, nothing of substance, just complete drivel. Might yeah. as might as well not be here. Uh, well, I guess I guess this is it. This has been a productive episode. I'm hoping that that Higashide will pick up, uh, speed again, when we're back next time. A week from now, um, and I think we're we're approaching the ending, guys. I mean, I know we're in the fifth stratum now, and there's two more to go, uh, but I feel like we're coming close. I feel like we're past the halfway point. We're coming close I somewhere think, to to the ending. I think. I think the dimension crack will will make the <coughs> the start go in a rush, you know. Yeah. Because I I don't think they will stop in the fifth. I think they will go up. Oh yeah. That's what I'm thinking. There's no reason, unless they, they get their ass beating it, there is no reason to then... No, even if if the, even if that happens, 
they could recover in the fifth in the fifth stratum. Right. I there mean, is no reason to then to go down. There's right two things left for them to achieve immediately in the plot. Find Raziel's book, which then will reveal whatever the fuck happened with Raziel, uh, yeah. and uh, and reach heaven. Like Lilith and Sorami are implied to know what they're doing. Uh, maybe they went back to to Pandora, uh, or something. Um. So there's nothing else to do. Uh, Satsuna needs to open up to Raziel. That's going to happen soon. They need to go to 6th floor and, and find the book and discover what the fuck happened with Raziel. And then I'm betting money that the thing that they're going to find out about, uh, find out about Raziel is what they're going to need to do. It's going to be their final quest to open up heaven. Uh... Is going to be related to, strongly related to that, is what I'm thinking. I think, I think so too. I think uh, she has kind of the formula to remake the bridge or something like it. Right. Just like I said before, or your theory too. Anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, this this has been this has been a good one. Uh, I'm glad that we could get it to work, even though we started a little bit late. Uh, I'm gonna have to finish voicing, revoicing the last episode, and then I'm gonna try to release both of them at the same time. Uh, I'm thinking that for this uh, week's thumbnail, we're using uh, the one of uh, uh, Setsuna standing in front of Raziel. Uh, and then for last week, I don't know what we're going to use. So that's going to be exciting. Okay. Um, so uh, see you guys again uh, later. See you later. And...